Welcome back, everybody. Today is day 33. Yay, yay, yay. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Sister Lucia focuses, kind of wraps it all up about the commandments. Yes. And before we get into Sister Lucia's message, just a reminder that Clay Ministries has sponsored this series. We're very grateful to mm-hmm. work with them. If you want to give a gift back to them, I'll put a link in the description and their website at the bottom of this video. I'm sure they would appreciate it. And we would too. So with that, Sister Lucia tells us Mm -hmm. she says that we have seen that by observing them so that's the commandments that we shall be saved and by violating them we shall be condemned it's like really black and white you know Mm -hmm. those who follow them are saved and those who don't are are condemned she's speaking to those of us who are here today who know better really like i know better i know that i shouldn't be doing you know xyz right Mm -hmm. and she writes there's just one little line she says your heavenly father does not want you to be lost I think oh, it's so important for us to remember that, that God doesn't want any of us to be lost. He loves us. She writes, all true love demands giving, renunciation, self-sacrifice, self-surrender. You know, when I was like saying I do to you, I don't think that those those words were really running through my mind. We got to get that in marriage prep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think how beautiful it is for a child to see a parent to self-sacrifice, to, you know, self-deny themselves to renunciate themselves. You know, that, that would, that, that's beautiful for the sake of the family, for the sake of the love mm-hmm. that they have for, for their spouse and for the children. Sister Lucia writes, the commandments are our best guardians, the best defense of human life. If everyone kept these divine precepts today, there would be no assailants, thieves, adulterers, idolaters, no enemies of any kind. You know, it's, it would be like heaven on earth, <laughs> really. <laughs> That's what it would be like. And this chapter is all about... Charity. Charity. Mm-hmm. Love. St. Thomas Aquinas says, however, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to fulfill the law of love, humanly speaking. And so we, of course, throw ourselves upon the mercy of God. But who did fulfill this love perfectly? Mm-hmm. It's Mary. Mm-hmm. And so now let us turn our gaze to Mary once again on this last day. Mm-hmm. Saint Anselm said that where there is great purity, there is great charity. Why? Saint Alphonsus writes, The pure and more emptied of self is a heart, the more it will be filled with charity towards God. Most holy Mary, because she was all humility and entirely emptied of self, was entirely filled with the divine love so that she surpassed all men and all angels in love to God. Do you remember this analogy? The vessel? Mary was filled to overflowing because she was empty. She, was, she didn't have earthly attachments. She did not have pride. She did not have lust. She did not have vice. And so she was filled to all fullness. She was filled with the divine love as much as a pure creature could be possibly filled. We aren't. (laughs) So it's hard to judge some things by appearance. This thing is not empty. Can you hear? There's stuff in it. And so that's like us. We got earthly attachments. And so we got to be, we have to humble ourselves so that God can fill us. So we Mm -hmm. go to the sacrament of confession and humble ourselves Mm -hmm. so that we could be filled like Mary. So we get rid of gluttony. And we get rid of pride, and we get rid of comforts, and we get rid of little balls, and, and everything, worldly attachments, until we are completely, in. whoa, there's stuff still in there. <laughs> there's more in there than sometimes we realize. That's the whole, that's the spiritual life. So we go to confession, we humble ourselves so that God then can fill us with his divine love. Mm-hmm. And if we need assistance with this, then we run to Mary because mm-hmm. she was filled to all fullness. Mm-hmm. St. Alphonsus teaches that God who is love came to enkindle our hearts with his divine love. Mm-hmm. And there was no heart that was more inflamed than the heart of Mary. So let's rewind to a special flame in the Old Testament. Do you remember Moses tending his sheep? Mm -hmm. And he looks off onto the side of a mountain and what does he see? A bush that's burning. So he walks up to the bush and kicks off his Nike sandals and gets a little bit closer and he notices something about the bush that's unique. It's on fire, but it's not being consumed. This bush is a prefigurement 
of Mary to come in the New Testament because God inflamed her heart with that divine love. And this flame that God has, His divine love, it does not consume us. It does not annihilate us. In fact, it does the opposite. It causes us to be who we have been created to be. Mm. So God filled Mary with all fullness, all grace, causing her to become who He had destined her to be, the mother of God, the mother of us mm. all. For what purpose? So that we would be led by her to her divine son. Mm -hmm. It's interesting on that holy night when she gave birth to Jesus, her heart was enkindled with that divine flame and it burned. And it can be said that on that night, as she held Jesus in her arms, it was fire holding fire. She held Jesus, the cause of her divine love within her heart. And then Mary continued to love with this divine flame burning in her heart her whole life. In fact, we have little acts of love in the spiritual life. You know, we're hot, we're cold, we're lukewarm, not Mary. She continuously, her whole life, acted in love. So it could be said that Mary's whole life was an act of love. She persevered right until the end. Mm -hmm. And there she finds herself now in the upper room, Acts chapter 2. Jesus has ascended. He's told his apostles to go to Jerusalem to wait for the promise of the Father. Mary goes with them. They go into that upper room and they pray for the promise of the Father, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And what happens? They hear the sound of a violent rushing wind and then tongues of fire descend upon them and they began to speak in other languages the Holy Spirit enabled them. You see, Mary was there in that upper room and she was praying for the grace that she had already received to be upon the apostles. Mm. You see, where Mary is, there is the divine flame of love. Mm -hmm. And then do you remember in Revelations, John sees a woman clothed with the sun? We understand that to be Mary. And what do we understand about the sun? The sun is one ball of fire. <laughs> so in other words, Mary is clothed with fire, the fire of divine love. And St. Bonaventure tells us something very interesting about fire. He says, fire keeps away flies. Mm -hmm. How is this relevant? He says, well, Mary, the divine love within her heart kept away the demons. She never succumbed to temptation. She was never assailed like us. And so what do we do? Well, we entrust ourselves to Mary and her intercession keeps away from us those diabolical attacks that seek to destroy us. Mm -hmm. Like fire keeps away flies. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong when you entrust yourself to the mother of God, mm -hmm. the Blessed Virgin. St. Alphonsus wrote, she was wholly inflamed with the love of God. She inflames all those who love and approach her and renders them like herself. For this reason, St. Catherine of Siena called Mary the bearer of the flame of divine love. If we also wish to burn with this blessed flame, let us always endeavor to draw near to our mother with prayers and affections. So friends, on this 33rd day of preparation to entrust ourselves to Mary, let's go to confession. Let's empty ourselves of those worldly attachments or to the best of our ability mm -hmm. so that we are free tomorrow to entrust ourselves to Our Lady. Mm -hmm. We'll seek your intercession today with the rosary right up there, Our Lady of Fatima. Pray for us. Mm -hmm.